about St. Christopher from the Orthodox perspective. Uh, we can learn a lot from you, so thank you very much, Bishop. St. Christopher lived during the reign of Theseus. Captured in battle by a comes, he was unable to speak. So he prayed, and an angel of the Lord was sent to him, saying, Be manly. Then the angel took hold of his lips and made him speak freely. The saint then went into the city and rebuked the great pagans who were persecuting the Christians. For this he was beaten by a governor named Barthas, to whom the saint replied, Willingly I humbled myself to the commandments of Christ, and I stood in place and was captured. For if I wanted to be moved by my rage and bravery, I would shrink neither from you nor from the strength of the emperor, which compared with my strength is weak and nothing. Therefore the emperor feared him and his strength, so he sent two hundred soldiers to arrest him, while he himself held no weapons in his hands, except a staff of wood which he held, because the bread of the soldiers had diminished along the way, and they had nothing else to eat. The saint prayed, and a few loaves remained multiplied. This paradoxical miracle astonished the soldiers, and they believed in Christ. When they arrived in Antioch, the hero martyr Babylos, who was the bishop of Antioch, baptized the soldiers along with the saint, and from Reprovus his name was changed to Christopher. When the saint stood before the imperial court, the emperor saw him and was astonished, and out of fear he fell backwards. Having come to himself, he considered how to change the saint through trickery and softened his will with flatteries so that by these he would be able to separate him from his faith in Christ. For he did not dare to try to persecute him with threats. So what did he do? He invited two women whose names were Kaliniki and Aquilina, who were beautiful in the eyes but harlots and unbridled in their will and they were suitable in warming up and persuading men towards the desires of the flesh. 
these are ordered to go to the saint and change him by any means possible by attracting him to love them. In this way, he defiled one hope to separate the martyr from Christ and have him offer a sacrifice to idols. But the opposite of what Emperor hoped had happened, for the saint catechized the above mentioned harlots and he separated them from the pagan religion. Thus they stood before the emperor and they confessed they were Christians. The emperor therefore had them punished and tortured, having them impaled with a spit from their feet to their soldiers. Having bravely endured this terrible torture, the blessed ones received crowns of martyrdom. This inflamed the emperor with rage, so he reviled St. Christopher for his ugly and monstrous face. The saint responded to him that he was fit to receive the energies of the devil, but this referring to his name Decius. Immediately the inhuman tyrant decided to kill the above mentioned 200 soldiers who had been sent to arrest the saint, but in return came to believe in Christ, and the blessed ones received crowns of martyrdom. He was ordered for St. Christopher to be nailed on a bronze mechanical instrument, underneath which was a lit flame. The saint was not only preserved unharmed from his torment, but he seemed to be relaxed and resting. These strange things were reported by many unbelievers, to whom they seemed easily received. The blessed one would say that he saw a tall and large-bodied man, fair in countenance, who wore white garments, and with the lightning bolts flashing from his countenance, he covered the brilliance of the sun. On his head was a bright crown, and around him were soldiers of a fiery form, against whom fought others who were black and ugly and appeared to be victorious. But when that awesome ruler turned with anger, he frightened and trampled all those who battled against him, and he received from their authority and power. When the people heard the saint narrate this, and having seen how he was preserved unharmed from the torment of the bronze instrument, they believed in Christ. Therefore they went and rescued the saint from the fire. However, all of them were cut down by the soldiers of the emperor. So they tied a stone to the neck of St. Christopher, and they cast him out into a well. But an angel of the Lord pulled the saint out of there and set him free. But again the imperious tyrant did not seize in his rage, and he ordered the saint to wear a bronze garment that had been heated with fire. Finally he was beheaded, and in this way the Blessed One received the crown of martyrdom. The saint is depicted transporting Christ on his soldier, which is why he was named Christopher, Christ bearer. Christopher was indeed a Christ bearer and God bearer since he had Christ in his heart living within him and walking among him. An example for all of us sisters and brothers. Amen. Thank you, Thank you very much Bishop and uh, there's aspects there of St. Uh, Christopher Martyr that we have not heard here in this part of it. So we'll, we'll get that copied and uh, distributed around through our website with your permission. Thank you, Bishop. So now let us uh, have the blessing. Friends, on the feast of Corpus Christi, we celebrate in praise of God the blessing of this statue of St. Christopher. May the patron saint of travellers welcome all who pass through the nation's capital of Canberra. May those who gaze upon the one who calmed, who carried the Christ child be uh, inspired to a life of work of service through carrying Christ to others. We trust that this statue will not only prompt admiration but more so inspire others to strive to live well the baptized life as Christ bearers in this city of Canberra, the nation of Australia and all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May St. Christopher carry the Christ child high above this city of Canberra and may Jesus bless and accompany all those 
who passed this way. Bless this statue of St. Christopher in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And may St. Christopher be our companion on the journey of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, crowning glory and joy of all the saints, graciously watch over you. Amen. Amen. May St. Christopher strengthen you to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may you too shoulder your crosses daily in service of others. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So just before we disperse, might we just um, recall, but if you can stay around a little while and have a look at the statue, the sculpture, the sculptor was very keen to see the act of tenderness and love between the gaze of Jesus, the child Jesus and St. Joseph, the moment of great conversion for St. Saint, uh, Saint Christopher. And may we too also come closer to Jesus through his loving and kindly gaze on us as individuals and as a community and also as the people of Australia. And secondly, as you can see, he was a very big man uh, in, in history and he presented in the bronze as a very big man. So before and after you go on the travel, maybe you could come here and say, Lord, give us safe trip or come back from the travel and say, thank you, Lord, for the intercession of St. Christopher for looking after us. And um, yeah, the foot here is um, something that you can perhaps touch and give uh, a little blessing to. The other thing is, of course, we've deliberately put this statue outside on the side of the cathedral facing the very busy road of uh, Canberra Avenue. So, uh, so the baby Jesus is looking towards the road, uh, blessing the travellers, and St. Christopher is looking towards the cathedral, the house of uh, the Eucharist and the, the, uh, the, the mother church of this archdiocese. So there's great symbolism in that. So we thank the Lord for all of those who have made some financial contribution, both here and elsewhere. And I, we ask the Lord to bless in the years ahead uh, those murderers come by. Already I know some of them are saying, we make the sign of the cross now that we have the St. Christopher there. And also, that's my office up there. And you can see that little gold um, picture there, that's of Mary. And uh, Father Petros, the parish priest of the Greek Orthodox Church here, he passes by here on the, on the way home from work and he always blesses himself. Uh, because he told me, you put the statue of Mary down for a few weeks. I said, we have to clean the window. <laughs> so I put it up there again. So there's two ways to St. Christopher and the icon of Mary that we can bless our city and enter into our city as uh, good citizens, but more so men and women of strong Catholic faith. Thank you so much for being here, and please come forward and, and inspect the statue. God bless you always. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you.